Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Jonah Central tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a mashed potato textures and 3D model within Blender. Let's get right into it. Start off by deleting the default cube and adding in a UV sphere. I'm just going to shade smooth this and use this to create the material that I want to make for the mashed potatoes. So now go to shading and click new. Now to start off, I'm going to add in a bump node and plug in that normal into the normal of the principal BSDF. Next, I'm going to add in a moose grave texture and I'm going to plug that height of the moose grave texture into the bump node. Now, as you can see, this ball is looking quite lumpy. Now I'm going to add in a mix RGB node and I'm going to add in a noise texture. And I'm gonna plug the factor of that noise texture into the color two of the mix RGB. Now, as you can see, we're getting a bit more detail, but to increase that detail even more, I'm going to turn up the detail on the noise texture, and I'm going to change the distortion to about 0.2, and now I'm going to balance these two textures until I'm happy with their blending. This looks a little bit too rocky, but this looks a little bit too much like clay, so I think a happy medium would be around 0 0.4, 0 0.3. It's really up to you. Next. For the base color, for now, I'm going to choose a nice and bright yellow color. I am happy with that. You can choose how bright and how saturated you want your yellow to be, depending on how much butter is in your mashed potatoes, but that is completely up to you. Next, for subsurface color, I'm just going to click this, click the little eyedropper tool, and click on this yellow color that we just made. Awesome! Now for the subsurface, for now, I'm going to turn it up to... Uh, just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to turn it up to 0.5, which is quite high. Now, um, the settings that I did for my subsurface radius, I first started off by setting everything to 1. Then for this top one here, I set to 2, and for this middle one, I set to 1.5. Awesome! Now this is really starting to look like mashed potatoes, but it looks a little bit plain, I guess you can say. So, to spice that up, I'm going to start with a Veroni texture and I'm going to plug the distance into that base color. Now it's going to get rid of that um, nice color we had. I'm just going to turn down the subsurface. So now it's just going to be black and white, but that is okay. I'm going to turn the strength down too, just so I can see what I'm doing. Next, I'm going to add in a color ramp and I'm going to drag this white value down very close here. So now if it isn't clear what I'm uh, doing right now, I'm trying to make salt or sorry, pepper particles for my mashed potatoes, just to make it a little bit more immersive. So now I have decent looking uh, pepper particles here. It's not like, you know, something out of real life, but it'll do for this material. So now to uh, continue this off, I'm going to add a mix RGB and I'm going to add in a noise texture. I'm going to copy this color ramp and I'm going to switch the type from linear to constant and I'm going to plug the factor of this noise texture into the factor of the color ramp and then I'm going to plug the color of the color ramp into the factor of this mix RGB down here. Awesome now I'm going to adjust these values until I only can see some of the black dots some not and then I'm going to on the second color of this mix RGB I'm obviously just going to make white. So now we can use this color ramp up here to adjust the amount of pepper we have on our mashed potatoes. And of course, if we want more particles of pepper, we can turn up the scale on this Veroni texture, which I think I might do. So yeah, I am happy with that. So now we have created procedural uh, pepper particles, which is awesome. But now you might be wondering, how do we get this to apply to our model? And it's actually quite simple. So add in a color ramp, and for the white value, we're just going to uh, use that eyedropper tool again, click on the subsurface color down here, and put that in between the mix RGB and the base color. And what that should do is now add over our uh, mashed potato color over top of our salt particles. Over top of our salt part. Shit! Over top of our pepper particles! Why can't I say- why do I keep saying salt? Anyways, uh, to add in a little bit more depth, I guess you can say. I'm going to add in a math node, and I'm going to keep it at add, and I'm going to drag this color from the mix RGB into the top value of our add node. I'm going to check off clamp here so we can't get any negative or over one values, and I'm going to plug this into the sub 
surface. Now, if I turn up this bump note again, as you can see, it's very, very, very subsurfacey, and it's a little bit too translucent. It looks like it looks like a thumb. So, to uh, fix that, I'm going to change the value on this add node until I'm happy with how it looks. Yeah, minus 0.6, I am happy with. Awesome, so now we got this great looking mashed potato material set up. Of course, you can adjust anything you want. You can increase the strength of the bump node. You can adjust the salt using the Veroni texture. It's pepper, oh my goodness. But now that we got this material done, I wanna take this a step further. What do you mean, take it a step further? Let me show you. So, there's two ways we can kinda quickly make a mashed potato 3D model. Uh, so there's two ways, I'm just going to move this off to the side, there's two ways we can do this efficiently. So we can either use metaballs, which uh, if you just copy and paste them next to each other, they kind of fuse together to make a blob, which would probably be the most efficient way of working. Or we can add in a bunch of UV spheres in replace of the metaballs. Now as you can see, they're not really fusing together like metaballs would, but that is okay because I have a solution. Uh, I'm not gonna make this look ultra realistic or whatever. I'm just gonna quickly do something. Yeah, that's probably good. So now join all the UV spheres together. Go down to the uh, object data properties tab. Go to remesh. Change the voxel size to something quite high, like maybe 0.5, and voxel remesh. Awesome. Now to make this look a little bit more mashed potato-y, I'm gonna add a subdivision surface to start off. Then we're going to add in a displacement modifier. Click new and go to this texture tab down here. Switch the type from image or movie to clouds. As you can see, this does not look like mashed potatoes. So to adjust the texture being applied to this mashed potato mound that I made, I'm going to change the scale of this texture to probably 0.9. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to turn up the subdivision surface just a little bit more and I'm going to turn the strength down on this texture until I am happy with it. And probably right about there is good. Awesome. Now let's take this a step further by adding in another subdivision surface modifier and adding in another displacement modifier. Now we're going to click new and create another texture and then go back to the texture tab down here and over top here, switch this from displace to displace 0.001. And then now we have texture 0.001, which is different from our original texture. So we can adjust this to create extra detail, which in this case, I'm gonna switch this texture scale from 0.9 to something a lot lower, like 0.25. But I'm gonna make this detail a lot finer as well by turning the strength down to, let's try 0.1. Even that might be a little bit much. And I'm happy with about 0.04. All right, now if I go back to uh, my shading tab, as you can see, this just looks like a white mound of rock. So to fix that, I'm gonna click this little browse material button here, click material 0.01, which is my mashed potato texture, and there is a delicious looking pile of mashed potatoes. Awesome, now I'm gonna add in a sun lamp, just cause why not? I'm gonna turn the strength up, and voila! There is your very perfect, amazing mound of mashed potatoes with a good material to go with it. Now, of course, there's a lot of adjustment that could be done. You can adjust the strength of this bump node if you want. There could be nothing. There could be lots. Uh, you could adjust the amount of pepper. I, I said it right for once. Uh, you could even adjust the displacement if you feel like there's not enough. You could turn up the strength. It's really, really up to you. So whatever uh, catches your creative eye, that's up for you to decide. But personally, this is what I think looks good. I'm happy with this. If you're happy with it as well, awesome. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a good tutorial, and I hope I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.